is my one of my favorite things about it is it purifies the waters, all waters. Calamus is probably the biggest and greatest water cleanser there is, like in streams when you see it. If you see get stands of calamus, that's going to be clean water because it literally takes the water and runs it through its system and comes out pure. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. It was an honor and a deep pleasure to have this informative conversation about calamus root with Karen Sanders. Karen is a deeply rooted plant person, which is is immediately evident in the way she shares and approaches plants. This interview is a special treat. Karen has been working with plants for most of her life. She was first trained in Native American traditional plant medicine by her grandmother. In her mid-teens, she apprenticed with a Mexican corandera and has subsequently studied with various traditional teachers as well as Western herbalists. Karen has been teaching and practicing herbal medicine from an energetic perspective for over 47 years. Karen has been a teacher at the Blue Otter School for over 20 years. She also has had a live radio show, The Herbal Highway, that has aired weekly since 1997 on KPFA 94.1 FM out of Berkeley, California. Well, thank you so much for being here, Karen. Oh, thank you. Thank you for asking. Oh, well, I'm just, I'm really excited and um, yeah, just really thrilled that you decided to be here, honored, and I'm really curious about what to hear, uh, what you have to say about calamus root for multiple reasons, oh. but before we get there, I'd love to hear about your plant path and journey. Okay, um, how, like, how it got started? Or? Sure, yeah, wherever wherever you want to start. I know you have a couple years to choose from along the way, so <laughs> whatever um. you'd like to share. It started as a child because it was in the family, my grandmother, uh, and it was always through the women, and they so they chose me, so that's where my training was. And let's see, my grandma passed when I was 14, and I still trained to finish up the 10 years, and then mm-hmm. I kind of took a break because, you know, kind of my life blew up, and I was a teenager, you know. And then when I was 17, I started to kind of come back you know, turn that way seriously. And by 20, I was teaching and seeing people. And so, yeah. And what did your training look like? I I imagine like in, in what you were with the plants, I imagine. Oh yeah. With the plants, with watching people get doctorings and watching people get medicine, how to make the medicine, how to know what plant families were all of that, you know, all Mm. oral, Mm. it was all oral. And it wasn't, you know, the Western thing of, which I did later to some extent, I've always done both after a while, you know, my grandma didn't do clients, you know, people just came and you took care of them. Even sometimes Mm -hmm. it was in the yard, you know? Mm. So, and then at about, I'd been doing it probably, I think at around 30, maybe a little bit more, I decided, you know, what's this Western thing that everyone's talking about? Because it's always been presented as the originator of herbalism, which is so not true, you know, especially in this country. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, it clearly absolutely came from Native peoples and and then added in African peoples that were forced to come here, you know, slaves. So, um, but I went to school and just to see, okay, what is this? It was so different. Um, like, like. 180 viewpoints, you know, of what it is to work with herbs and what they mean and how they are and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, so that was my training. 
And then I've done it, you know, my whole life. I've always said, you know, back in the day, you couldn't make money doing it. So I always had second gigs, you know, two second jobs, third jobs. But this was like the primary. How did the Herbal Highway come about? I had a roommate who worked at this radio station in Berkeley, KPFA. Hmm. It, it was It's a great station because it's completely people sponsored. So there's no advertising. They're beholding to no one. Hmm. And um, she was like, you should have a radio show. And I was like, well, I don't know about that. And and then she, you know, we went down and did an air check. And I did it with a dear friend of mine who's since passed, I hate to say, Melissa Asselam. She said, I'll do the first show with you. We can use this air check for to see if they'll give it to you. And she was an astounding homeopath. So hmm. that was like, you know, that was the first one. And then they said, yes. So I, it was once a week live. This year is the 25th year. Wow. So, Yeah. Yeah. And that is that mostly interviews then the Herbal Highway? That's what I'm most familiar with. It's not just interviews. It's I would just talk about stuff. Mm. And a lot of times I'd be teaching Materia Medica because I'd be talking about the, you know, as many herbs as I could cram in. It's people teaching about different subjects, talking about different subjects. It's I would do live, you know, call ins so people could actually just call in and oh, ask wow. questions. Yeah. And um so it's a lot of different things. But, but hmm. the intention of the show was, I think, that this information should be free and then people can decide. But I also wanted to show people I tried my best to, you know, in those days, it wasn't as easy as it is now to get people from around the world. Um, you know, this has been a non-broken, you know, uh, thing for, you know, herbalism in most cultures for forever, you know, time immemorial. So I would try and have as many people from different types, you know, different cultures. Yeah. yeah and they would just, they would call in, obviously this is. Yeah. We'd hook them up and then I would interview them, you know, yeah. and sometimes they were in the studio because Oakland is so diverse and it mm -hmm. was, and it was really great because sometimes I'd get, I'd say, get a translator and I'd have them just speak in their language because that's oh, what fine. they spoke. And so we'd have these slow conversations because they'd be translated and unanswered, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but I think it's important that people hear people in their language. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, Karen, you're probably, I, you must be familiar with this concept of uh, when a plant, like a plant keeps showing up in your life and then it, there's something to be learned from that, you know, and you need to pay attention and say, why is this, why is this plant showing themselves to me. Well, uh, two weeks ago, I interviewed Jim McDonald, and he wanted to talk about calamus root. And then um, just this past week, I was telling someone about this, like, kind of funny thing in my head that was going on. And they said, Oh, have you ever worked with calamus root for this? And then I got your um, podcast for him, and you said you wanted to talk about calamus root. So I'm kind of like, just wide open here. I'm all <laughs> I'm very oh, excited see. to hear about calamus root, because it's not like calamus root is like rosemary, you know, this is no, not a and that's why I popular wanted to, herb. It's, I love this plant, you know, yeah. and I didn't know Jim loved it as much too. So, yeah. Yeah. One of my first memories of Jim is we were on a bus together and he was chewing calamus root and I was very intrigued, you know, because as a, I could smell it, it has a very particular it, it, yeah, aroma. Yeah. The perfume industry. Yeah. So they, yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited to hear what, what you have to share about calamus root. Calamus to us is turtle medicine. So it's a big medicine. I mean, all medicines are big medicine. I, but turtle medicine is that the kind of the mother holders. They're off of turtle lodges. You know, it's a lot of medicine. It's grounding. But it's also the really deep ability to uh, basically mine all areas. So like go deep down in as far as you could and then come all the way out with that information and then send, keep that going and then mm -hmm. utilize it. So it's that kind of medicine mm -hmm. um, and you don't take it lightly. This is one of the plants I was taught, you know, in our way, the plants will give you a song. And I remember thinking, oh, I, when I first heard that I was gonna get all these songs, but then I was told, no, if you're lucky, you get one or two or three in your life, you mm -hmm. know, because you have to know a plant so deeply that it wants to give you that kind of medicine 
So this is, but this is one that I have that it gave me. Um, but it's called, the other name for it is um, Sweet Flag. That's what is it, the perfumery and the Westerners use. And Calamus is just, it's Latin. Ichawa is, Ichawa uh, is the other name. And you can use the root. Most people dry it up. Some people have used it. You have to really know how to use it to use it fresh. But usually it's dried, you know, and you want to cut it the long way, the root. Hmm. You know, it has these roots that go like that. So you cut them. If you cut them the other way, it changes the medicine. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, you want to be careful of that. And I wonder if Jim was just chewing on it because it tastes good. But it's it's used, you'll see it at ceremonies especially the singers, you know, they'll have some string around it, a thong and have this tied up and suck on it. Cause it helps you with those high notes. But hmm. some people, you know, some people are high note singers. So that's what that's about. So, hmm. but it's, um, it, it directs the light to self. I would say it's inner, it's, it's vibration is really full and gentle and it's kind of neutral its temperature is pretty much neutral, slightly cooling, you know, like you would think of the, well, not the center of the earth, that's pretty hot, but, you know, all above that with all the waters that go through it. And it helps to bring light. I find that it helps to bring energy down a little bit into the body. So if people run surface a lot, either in their emotions or their physical, mental, spiritual, you know, to like come down in where you're supposed to be more hmm. so i use it for that you know for the uh, uh deeper realities guess you, you would say you know some people are terrified of that it makes sense because to go deep you have to go past all your trauma you know mm -hmm. uh you know to get past it so it makes sense it's a big um it's used a lot in digestive like ulcers heartburn really calming to the stomach you know how chamomile excites the stomach you know it it actually stimulates it this one calms it so i use it for the that if somebody just has that kind of tendency to all their stuff is in their stomach you know and it's i have notes i wrote notes can you believe this i'm getting that age um i love it for it's bitter even though it has a sweetness so that's going to make anything that's bitter is going to make the digestive work kick it in. It's really good for hiatal, hiatal hernias. It's huh. like really good um, for the weakness. It'll heal the tears, you know, wherever that tear is, but also it just helps to heal the weakness. Cause once you have one and you don't do anything, it will heal on its own, but it has a propensity to be weak and this helps mm -hmm. with strengthening that. So that's not true. Huh. The root tea is good for arthritis. We used to use the leaves where a lot in ceremony were put in the lodges, fresh, the fresh leaves. Um, some because when you step on them or crush them, they smell like tangerine. Huh. Um, and I've even done teas with them, you know, put them in like summer teas, but also they keep fleas away, you know, and little insects huh. like that. So it was a great way to like put them in, you know, in the South, you get a lot of fleas. It's that kind of weather. So mm -hmm. it keeps it away. So it has this beautiful, I love just rolling the leaves uh, for that smell. It's oh, I've this, never done that. Now I can't wait for mine to Oh, go. yeah. It's this, <laughs> It's kind of this interesting mix of the, you can still taste that kind of earthiness of the root, but there's this high tangerine smell that comes out that's just amazing. It's relaxing to the throat. That's why singers, you know, want to use it. It's, you can powder it for um, toothaches. You know, just stick it right on. And also, I use this for teething, whereas blue chamomile is good for uh, teething with real, you know, both of them for pain. But this one adds this thing of, I call it the St. Bernard syndrome. You know where babies, some babies just drool, like yeah. St. Bernard's when they teeth. This, yeah. like, helps with that. It takes that mm -hmm. out, but it also helps with the pain of it you know. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Cause we forget, you know, it's lucky that we get amnesia about certain things, but the pain of, imagine your teeth like shooting through your gums. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, when you think about it that way, it's like, Whoa. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's like I said, it helps. So the voice doesn't crack. I use this. I used to make sprays. I had a lot of 
professional singers as clients and I'd make a spray and this was always in there, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that they could use, especially if they're traveling, you know, they all get, their voices get messed with, it's too much. Mm -hmm. It opens the senses. I, I like it for nervous energy, kind of wider, wiry energy. It really just uh, kind of just brings it together. I, I feel like when the light is fracturing because there's heat, which is what nervous energy often is, it just really brings things into the shape they're supposed to be, you know, as far as energetically. Um, I've used it in wasting disorder with anyone that has it from babies to elders. It works quite well for the cramping, like with all the itises, irritable bowel syndrome, colitis, diverticulitis, you know, gut stuff. But that it really helps with cramping in a way like wild yam does. And I use it more because while well, GMA is getting harder and harder, you know, it's becoming mm -hmm. endangered, unfortunately. But also this one, I do the wild GM when it's that stabbing, like, oh, and I use this one when it's just constant kind of cramping, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, for that's how I kind of differentiate. It works on parasites. You know, I will say this about parasites. People always want to do herbal treatment and I understand, but they don't understand that the dosage that you have to use is as toxic as the pharmaceuticals and often doesn't get rid of them. I know people have done these toxic doses and then they're like, oh my gosh, I still have them. So I always tell people that's where they got the pharmaceuticals dialed in. I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. And then you, and then you heal with the herbs, you know, what yeah. the pharmaceuticals have done. It sharpens the mind. It cuts through the cobwebs. You know, people, mm. sometimes people feel like they have cobwebs in there. Um, so it's a mind sharpener for people who you know, I use it for storytellers who have to have that like long, you know, long, long stories they have to remember. And and even some singers that do like have multiverse songs that are medicine songs. So I work it with that. It works well on anorexia, not bulimia, but anorexia. I've used huh. it for my whole time, you know. Huh. And anorexia has changed. It's very interesting what it used to be caused by when I first started out is very different than now there's such a social context and societal context to anorexia, mm -hmm. um, you know, and even who is getting it and who has it, that's really changed, mm -hmm. but I still use this. It, it works on hay fever, colds, you know, it has that effect to tone down inflammation, tone down heat. God, this plant is so, uh, I just might, one of my favorite things about it is it purifies the waters, all waters. Mm -hmm. So the waters in your body, the waters outside. It calamus is probably the biggest and greatest water cleanser there is, like in streams when you see it. If mm -hmm. you see stands of calamus, that's going to be clean water because it literally takes the water and runs it through its system and comes out pure. So mm -hmm. I know there's a town out here. Well, I'm not in California. <laughs> down in California um, called Arcata, and they do their whole city system is these series of ponds um, to purify. It's so cool. They've done it naturally. Mm -hmm. And the, the last pond is this huge, basically Calamus, you know? Really? Yeah. Wow. So, um, I hope they're still doing it that way. It, it's astounding to watch. I'll put it in things that I want water to be cleaned, you know, if it's not going to change the pond then so that's one way people knew that there was clean water is if there was calamus there that that water was getting cleaned hmm. so, yeah you know and uh it's also respiratory congestion but i i love it for intestinal sludge like i call it you know it's kind of clears the pipes you know gas and when people just really their system isn't working well so it's always a little funky um, and kind of fermenty, you know, uh, I, I, some people I joke about, they have like kimchi intestines, you know, it's always like <laughs> bubbling and fermenty in there. So calamus is great for that. I mean, I think it's really underused. It's interesting to me that how yeah. underused it is and you don't need a lot, like five drops, eight drops, you know, none of these herbs need to be used the way they are. I would say like a couple sips of tea for spirit stuff, a drop, you know, half a cup of tea is plenty. Um, we cook it long, 
we, we really just cook it up long and simmer it. It was even put in foods a little bit, you know. Huh. So especially foods that were kind of like, you know, maybe meat that is at the end of its, when you dry up for end of the winter and it's maybe getting a little gamey or it already is, you'd put that in. Hmm. So um, we would, we would use sassafras too. It, it's it harmonizes all energies of the body, hmm. all the different energies that we carry. It, it's a great harmonizer. Um, hmm. Do you use it in formulas as a harmonizer too? Yeah, it's one of them. Yeah, yeah there's a couple I use, and and that's definitely one of them. You know, hmm. it's kind of that. They're different ones. You know, the ability is more the director. Like I want, you know, tell them where to go. It's the, it's the, what do you call those dogs? The border collie of the plant world in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. <laughs> this is more harmonizing. And really, honestly, if you've put together a decent formula, it should be. If you've really thought about all the energies and the people's, you know, there's so many energies to think about when you're putting together that kind of medicine. It's interest. I find it interest in the chest and kind of pushes in, you know, goes inward. So I think about it for chest stuff, even if there's like, if you think that's where some of the trauma is or that's where it happened or it, even specifically if someone got hit you know in the chest a lot i'm like oh they need calamus huh. um because of that so i i think about it there um it activates so you know it activates and harmonizes the formula you know huh. it's like bazing um but so do your prayers and your songs that you put you know well you know i do when i'm making formulas yeah, you know, you're praying for the person or asking to help and uh, singing. And uh, it helps you focus on suppressed stuff. I use it for people that deny things a lot and just don't want to touch anything. People don't realize the way energy works. The more you run, the more it chases you. You know, when you push again, oh, it, energy like this, it meets you. Like that pushes back. So you're better off looking at the stuff and feeling it, you know, trauma. But... This helps with people that run away because it lets it um, it lets you feel rooted and grounded, you know, in a, in a good way. So I think that that helps with giving you the chance to change, you know, kind of denial stuff. It lets you see, it lets you have full presence because it lets you go down into the shadows and then bring them out to where there's light, you know. <laughs> and the shadows is where the truth is, you know, and the light is where you figure out what to do with that, you know, <laughs> uh, like... Uh, so it helps people be more present, you know, stay out of the past, stay out of the trauma or always trying to jump to the future, which actually just makes anxiety. So uh, it's a really great one. We, you know, we're supposed to live in the present and this plan is such a nice one for that mm -hmm. to really help with that. It's also helpful in, I think I use it in menopause when there's really rapid change and you're just like, what's going on? You know, I'm even using in puberty for that because huh. I feel menopause is just your second puberty, you know, uh, is like a second puberty, really. If you think about what's going yeah. on, except for instead of the hormones rising, they're, they're do doing the opposite. Mm -hmm. I once had this funny conversation. I was at a table of everybody had menopause. And then there was a 15 year old person there, masculine person. And he was like, so what, what is menopause? And I'm like, do you really want to know? He goes, no, yeah, I'm really asking. So I said, well, you know how you feel this and you have your sex and this and this and this. I said, well, that's menopause. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, the only difference is your sex drive kind of can slow down a little bit. And he goes, oh, I go, don't worry. It comes back. You know, it's temporary. <laughs> I said, you're driven nuts by yours because it's too much. And, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. but he was like, he totally looked but his mom, like, I get it. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? Yeah. <laughs> I said, you guys are basically doing the same thing at the same time. That's why you're crashing into each other. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, he was like, because, you know, it was so delightful, though, because how many teenagers ask that, especially, you know, you know, like, what is it really? Like, really describe this to me. Mm -hmm. So, but it made me think about it. You know, um, if you use a lot of calamus, it's going to make you puke. Um, it's actually been used ceremonial for that, the final cleanse, you know, the mm -hmm. final everything. But um, it's it's a low dose plant, and I watch it during pregnancy if you don't know how to watch that that and um, bleeding disorders because it can thin the blood a little bit. Well, nobody uses MAO inhibitors anymore, really, do they? It's yeah. all something else. I will say this: gophers love this plant. 
So if you're going to not want them introduced, put them in a bathtub, get one of those old bathtubs and just grow it in there because it's lads wet soil. It's a box. It's a marshy. You see this in marshes and bogs. So you have to build. We had it at the last place I lived. It was really dry. So we built, I dug a huge hole and then made, put plastic and then did sands and then made the right soil and then made a, we basically made a bog and then Mm. had the one half of it was calamus. And then we had all these other plants, mansa and bone set and skull cap mm. and on the other side with a little bridge going over it. It was quite oh, pretty. Nice. Wow. Yeah. But you know, you, if you're crazy enough, you can make, have anything in your yard. Cause you're. Yeah. That's what I'm working on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this one is such a, it's so pretty, you know, it's flower comes out the sideways and it looks like little corns. Mm-hmm. It looks like a little cob, corn cob. And there, most people miss them. It draws. I've seen turtles come. If you have an area where there are definitely the frogs and the toads were always in there, the snakes, you know, they mm-hmm. love that kind of environment and it's, it's protective. This plant grows so dense that it's really, and the dragonflies came. They love this plant because they can sit up and see, mm-hmm. you know, it's that, that, those tall leaves, you know, those kind of thin sword like things. So. I really, really love this plant. There's a couple, there's other things, but you know, it's, I don't want to tell it because people will be like, there's other medicine ways to use it, but it's, it's such a beautiful plant to get to know also, you know, it's energy is just so, um, it's a really sweet plant, but it's also like, you know, one of the students, they were always wanting to harvest. And I said, you know, it's okay to take one. I asked, and we were out there early and it was, you know, early, I think it was early spring or fall. I don't remember because we were doing it. And it was, it was cold, freezing cold water. Their hands were in, in the bog. And she was telling me that at one point she felt like something, she had her hands down in and she felt like something grabbed her wrist and was trying to pull her down into the earth because she reeled back. I go, what's the matter? And she was telling me, so, you know, it, it, it has its sense of humor, but it also is like, oh, you, you want to get to know me that will come on down in, <laughs> you know, <laughs> come into my house. So, you know, yeah. but it's a, uh, uh, you know, those marshy boggy areas are so important and draw so many other beings there, the insects and like so many come to be around that. Mm-hmm. So you get to really see how it's used, who uses it, what other energies are there. Yeah. And I think it is a harmonizer because I've seen in different things there that I'm like, I wouldn't normally think you'd be in the same place together. You know, like, mm-hmm. yeah. So um, it's a beautiful, beautiful plant. Yeah. And as you were speaking about so many of Calamus's gifts, the idea that, that what came to me was like, oh, the reason why Calamus is coming up so much is because that's going to be my plant ally for the year. Oh. Um, we do that through my 10 month medicine making course. Everyone chooses a plant alley and I like to do it with everybody. And, yeah. and I've been wondering what mine is going to be for this year. And now I just kind of like, Oh yeah, that, there that it is, is obviously what, yeah. what plant I'm going to work with this year. And I just, you have shared so many things that I've never heard of before with Calamus. I mean, I just feel, and you shared so much that I feel like I could listen to this podcast five more times. Yeah. It's an easy one to to grow as long as you give it that mark, you know, make a bog. I actually, I do grow it and I had it in an area where there was a sprinkler that went on frequently, but that system has changed. But, and so it kind of, it got drier. It still survived, but I was like, okay, this is no longer thriving here. I need to think of a new place, but I have this big oak barrel that's lined in something. So it doesn't. Oh, that's perfect. They lose water and it's right underneath the, like where the rain comes off of the roof. Have and you, it's yeah. just this marshy, boggy thing that I've been kind of like, what do I grow in here? It's so marshy, boggy. There you but go. Yeah. And plus you gave me the idea of like, oh, maybe I should put some yerba mansa in there too. <laughs> so yeah. I'm yeah, make a little, it's not a big space. It's, you know, it's an oak barrel. So there's some room in there, but. Yeah. Cause they go sideways, those roots, you know, yeah. the rootlets. So um, yeah, you'll be happy. It's so pretty. Why do you smell that? Those leaves. Those oh, fresh I can't leaves. Wait. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I usually just take the tips and got it up into like, summer you know refreshing teas summer teas oh nice. yeah i will definitely yeah. try that 
but um, and crush it a little bit so those oils would get in a little bit, you know, not mm -hmm. a lot, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's just a really delightful, very powerful plant, you know. Yeah, and as you said, somewhat underappreciated or underutilized, and maybe to its benefit, maybe <laughs> because once things get I call them, you know, the, they become stars. They yeah. start to get over harvested. Yeah. You know, people forget, you know, they, they think they have the right to just go out and take things, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. I've never sat down and talked with Jim about this plant. So oh, I know he would love that. <laughs> yeah. It, well, it makes sense. He's in Michigan. It, it has a perfect environment for it in places. And mm -hmm. it loves that sandy soil that Michigan's all, some of it is so, you could, I remember once going like that to a bird dog and it just came out. I was shocked. Mm. <laughs> I was like, that's not California <laughs> so, oh. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you so much for sharing so much about Calamus. It's oh, I could sit and talk all day about it, you know, and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm really curious what herbal projects you have going on right now or what are, what's up in your life right now? Um, some I'm taking a break. Some I'm, you know, getting to an age where I'm slowing down. Honestly, I'm working with. I have a, a group. I'm we're working with deeply, going away for days and days and days. And we're going to do that four times a year. I teach like just, you know, hey, they're like, when do you want to teach? So I just call a day and they'll put it out, and you'll have however many can come in. But if it's outside, it could be anyone and a lot more. I'm doing some canoe journey stuff, you know, working when the canoes go, when the actual canoe starts the journey, hmm. helping with the bus, the herbal bus. And I'm getting involved in different things, you know. I don't do the radio show much. Sarah took it over, Sarah Holmes. I was like, I, you know, every week, five <laughs> for 25 years. So about five years ago, it's like, hmm. Well, come on now, though, I get to just do whatever I want, which is really great. You know, I'm at the point where and I don't know how I got away with it, but I get to do nothing and then just say I want on and get to get away with it. I love so, it. <laughs> yeah. So, so I still do that. You know, I'm happy it's on because I think it's super important mm -hmm. that people have that kind of information. So I would say that and a lot I'm we just moved. So we have a yard that we people came and helped us like clean the yard, pull ivy out, and then set bark down because you have to grow a certain way here. Mm -hmm. And it holds the moisture. And I, speaking of, there's a little cement pond here that would make a really nice pond because it's not leaking mm -hmm. and it's not huge, but we're about to have babies in our lives. And I'm like, oh, you don't want a pond right next to where they play. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just, it's but just maybe weird. a marsh. You know. Well, that's what it's, it's about to be a bog. Yeah. <laughs> nice. like, I'm like, that would make a great bog. So there's good, that's where the calamus is going to go. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, that'll be perfect for the calamus. The urban mm -hmm. monza, it doesn't, it, I don't think it'll be, it's too wet up here for monza, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be perfect for the calamus. So, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of what I'm doing, just thinking about other things and, where I want to go and all that kind of stuff. You know, people mm -hmm. have asked for years, oh, why don't you write a book? But I'm so, it's so oral tradition to me. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you're in Washington State here now, even though we're quite a distance away from each other. I hope that I know. we get to meet in person one day soon. Probably five, five, six hours. Is that how far you yeah. are from Tacoma? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, which is not. I mean, once you live in California, so huge, that's like, well, <laughs> right. that's not a bad drive. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful drive, too. Yeah. yeah. That's what I heard. Mm -hmm. You know, where I'm at, I'm getting to go out and I'm really f looking at the lands here and what grows here and being taught mm -hmm. by the people who are here. And there's a lot of nations here, a lot of tribes. So I'm getting to learn different things about the same plant and being able, luckily, and honor being honored by being asked to come on some of these harvests so mm. uh, the woods are so different oh yeah. they're so different mm -hmm. so yeah yeah mm. well i'd love to end with a question i'm asking everybody in season seven 
which is what is your advice for people who are just starting on their herbal path? Oh, wow. Be humble. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't see that in the Western stuff much. Be mm -hmm. humble, humble, humble. These are gifts and they're beings and they're sharing those gifts and those medicines. You know, it's not about you. It's about them. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen people be like, oh, look what I do. And it's like, if you took the herbs away from herbalists, you wouldn't be doing a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Be clear about who's doing what. Be humble. Have your heart in it. Don't make it heady. Like, really be respectful enough to have a deep relationship with these plants where you give them the time and the respect and tend them and grow them and really listen. I would say that. I would say it's a lifetime spark. You'll never know. There's no end to the knowledge. If you show up, they'll keep teaching you. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting that way. But so I would do that. I would just understand they're your elders. So, you know, treat them as such. I think the humility thing is the key. It's probably the key to everything really, you know, mm -hmm. and just be excited and don't, you know, it takes a while to get to know someone. So, you know, don't, Worry about what you know, even if you only know one thing about something, that's enough. Mm -hmm. you know. But take the time. I see people like kind of doing stuff before I think they really have the knowledge. So I would just say take the time, like I said, and, and welcome. You know, it's exciting. I hope they stay there. Mm -hmm. You can't have enough herbalists or herbal people. So mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to take that wisdom you just shared and apply it to my time with Calamus because I'm very inspired now to sink deeper with that plant, spend more oh. time with Calamus and and get to know it because there's obviously so many gifts there to learn. So, Oh, I, I think you're going to love it. Yeah. I think you're going to be very happy with that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, thank you so much for this introduction, for sharing so much wisdom about Calamus. And oh, thank you for for having me on. Thank yeah. you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. My pleasure. Great. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to head over to the show notes at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com to get a transcript of this show. There, you'll also be able to sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is the best way to stay in touch with me. You can also visit Karen directly at blueotterschool.com. If you want more herbal episodes to come your way, then one of the best ways to support this podcast is by subscribing on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. I deeply believe that this world needs more herbalists and plant-centered folks, and I'm so glad that you're here as part of this herbal community. Also, a big round of thanks to the people all over the world who make this podcast happen week to week. Nicole Paul is the project manager who oversees the whole operation from guest outreach to writing show notes to actually uploading each episode and so many other things I don't even know. She really holds this whole thing together. Francesca is our fabulous video and audio editor. She not only makes listening more pleasant, she also adds beauty to the YouTube videos with plant images and video overlays. Tatiana Rusikova is the botanical illustrator who creates gorgeous plant and recipe illustrations for us. I love them. I know that you do too. Christy edits the recipe cards and then Jenny creates them as well as the thumbnail images for YouTube. Michelle is the tech wizard behind the scenes and Karen is our student services coordinator and customer support. For those of you who like to read along, Jennifer is who creates the transcripts each week. Xavier, my handsome French husband, is the cameraman and website IT guy. It takes an herbal village to make it all happen, including you. Thank you so much for your support through your comments, your reviews, your ratings. I read every review that comes in because they're like a little herbal love letter that brightens my day. Like this one. I have followed Rosalie's emails for quite a while now. I love the way she delivers the information in an interesting way so you feel engaged in the conversation about whatever herb she is speaking about. Her recipes give neophytes a good chance to be successful trying some of these herbs, and I have not encountered a bad one yet. I'm thrilled she's doing this podcast. Do you love this podcast? If you leave a review for me on Apple Podcasts, I may be reading your herbal love letter on the show next. Okay, you've lasted to the very end of the show, which means you get a gold star, 
and this herbal tidbit. When Karen was talking about calamus being a plant that could go deep and then bring energies up to the surface, I was reminded of a story of Sky Woman, as told by Robin Wall Kimmer. In this story, a muskrat, an animal that loves to eat calamus root, dives deep down into the waters and brings up a handful of soil, which is then used to make Turtle Island. If you've never heard Dr. Robin Wall Kimmer tell the story, then I highly recommend it. You can easily find audio versions of her sharing this, whether it's on YouTube, on podcasts, or through the audio version of her book, Braiding Sweetgrass, which is my desert island book and one that I highly recommend.